Are you returning to the piano after a long break? And maybe looking for something to help you gradually build or rebuild your technique? If so, then stay tuned for my third instalment reviewing Melanie Spanswick's Play It Again Piano. Today, we'll look at her third piece in the book, which is Mendelssohn's Song Without Words. If you're sitting comfortably, then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner. The place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves a piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the most from this great hobby. If it's your first visit, then I invite you to subscribe so that you get regular piano-related videos every week. I started to relearn again about three years ago and to be honest didn't take a particularly structured approach. I basically just relearned pieces that I remembered I used to play or if I heard something on YouTube that I liked I'd decide to try and learn that. But what I was finding was that generally the pieces I was choosing were taking me a very very long time to learn. So I thought I'd probably be better trying to find something with a little more structure that would take me through pieces of gradually increasing difficulty so that I'd be able to rebuild my technique more easily. When I was looking for something, I came across a set of books by Melanie Spanswick called Play It Again Piano, which are specifically aimed at people returning to the piano after a break. At the moment, there are books one and two, and I'm reliably informed that very soon there'll be a book three as well. I was so impressed by the books that I decided to do a review on my channel, and this is now the third review looking at, as you might have guessed, the third piece. This third piece is one of Mendelssohn's Songs Without Words. It's Opus 30 number 3 in E major. It's a lovely little piece. It's only 27 bars long. You've got the first two bars that make an introduction, which is a set of sweeping arpeggios, and then basically a beautiful hymn-like chord playing piece that follows. As you might expect, Melanie calls out a couple of things that this will help you improve in your technique, and those are basically chordal playing and lyricism. I'd probably add a third to this, and that's the playing of two-handed arpeggios. So let's start with the chordal playing aspect. Of course, the first thing to consider is voicing chords, you know, and I don't mean voicing in the sense that jazz musicians talk about it in terms of inversions and versions of chords to use. It's more in the classical sense of where you voice a chord to make sure you bring out the melody and maybe the tenor line or even the bass line in any chord that you play. Thankfully, Melanie gives some great advice on how you can actually practice the chordal playing. The second thing that she strongly recommends is thinking about making sure that you keep the piece legato without always relying on the pedal. And this of course is very good exercise in terms of finger independence because you need to keep moving fingers around to hold on to keys for as long as possible before you move on to the next one. And she also brought an interesting concept that I'd never come across before, which was about the illusion of legato, where you can't actually maintain legato. She did a blog post on this equally on her website, so I'll put a link to that in the comment section below for you so that you can have a look at it. The chordal playing aspects of this wasn't massively difficult for me, I have to say, because I grew up in the Salvation Army in the church, so playing hymns was almost second nature to me when I was a lot younger. Although I have to admit, when I really sort of recorded myself, looked at it and thought, hmm, is that quite as good as it could be? There were quite a few sections that were weaker than I imagined that they would be, so I spent some time working through those. For me, the major challenge with this piece was actually the introduction, which then repeats itself at the end. It's basically three two-handed arpeggios. Luckily, Melanie does actually call these out as being an area for specific focus and gives quite a few practice tips on how to improve them. An aspect that challenges me is to be able to keep the arpeggio smooth as it passes from one hand into the next. 
I had a very similar problem when I was trying to learn Debussy's first arabesque some time ago, where the introduction does something very similar, where you've got a little arpeggio that passes from the left hand to the right hand, then back to the left hand again. Trying to get it smooth so that it doesn't bump as it passes from one hand to the other takes quite a lot of control. And I remembered that one thing that helped me when I was doing this was that I'd read about this specific problem in Graham Fitch's piano practice series, where he gives advice in how you can focus on passing from one thumb to the next when you play that, that introduction. So basically, I was also, apart from Melanie's advice, able to adapt Graham's advice into this particular situation. I also used a lot of different rhythms and legato, staccato, strong finger type practice in order to try and get these right. I would say at the moment, probably seven times out of ten, I'm reasonably happy with how it sounds. I mean, it's still not right, so quite a lot of work to do, I guess, but given that before it was zero times out of a hundred that I could get it to sound how I wanted, I think I've made some progress at least. So, for the third time, a great choice of piece in Play It Again Piano. Well presented and with lots of really practical advice on how to play it. So far, each of the three pieces has actually helped me develop different parts of my technique, which I find extremely useful. I'm already working on the fourth piece, which is a study by Berens. This one, I have to admit, I'm finding very, very challenging. It seems that everything that I'm not particularly good at doing is in this piece in one place or another. So it might be a couple of weeks before I'm able to produce a video looking at that piece because it's, for me, quite hard to play anyway. Play It Again Piano is, of course, available on Amazon, and I've linked it below for you in the description so you can go and check it out. I do recommend it. It's great value for money. If you're not already, then do remember to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Click that little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next week.